All right, uh, what we got here today is a uh, 2003 Ford Windstar. And what I'm going to be showing you is uh, how to deal with a battery on light that is still illuminated. Even after you do an Altenair change, this Altenair was rebuilt and reinstalled by our shop. And then brought to us because the light didn't go out. Um, I've already tested this vehicle. It actually has a bad regulator. But I'm going to show you real quick how to verify that the regulator is doing what it's supposed to be doing on a computer controlled uh, 6th generation Ford charging system. First things first, start the vehicle up. And... As you can see right now, the only light on is the check engine, but the battery light comes on and comes off as it wants to. There it is. As you can see, it's on now. And uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do a code check. This time I'm using the uh, Genesis rather than the uh, Bluetooth unit because I can get a better diagnostic on this one. Let's go into the Ford. Uh, it takes it a second. Use. That was, that was the generation generic module. Let's go into the engine control module. Alrighty. The reason I'm showing you this is it has a lot of various uh, problem codes, but something that stands out is there is a couple of charging system related codes, and anytime you have a lot of random codes and you have a charging system issue, you need to take care of the charging system issue first. As you can see, there's a lot of uh, O2 codes, and then this alternator code here, it's a P1246. And if we go out and go into the ABS system, and we'll go down here to read codes. All right, you can see all the ABS codes, and a 1317 battery voltage high code. You can't, none of these are reliable codes. Um, anytime you have voltage that's way above or way below it's supposed to be, it could create all kinds of problems inside the ECMs, the body control module, transmission control module, ABS control module. You can have all kinds of issues because voltage is fluctuating outside the computer's control. So, let's find out what's going on with the charging system. Well, as you can see, you got my voltmeter hooked up to the charging system. And we show we got about 14.2 volts, which isn't too bad. It's about what you'd expect. We're going to hook up a uh, clamp meter up to the cable going to the alternator, see what kind of load the system's under. And this will have hooked up to the this other voltmeter real quick okay as you can see that the uh, clamp meter is hooked to the voltmeter read zero that's what you want you can adjust this to get it to zero if you need to we're gonna clamp it around the feed line you see right now we're systems pulling about 19 amps headlights or parking lights are on so that's about normal Let's turn them off see what happens As you can see, you can see amperage is coming down. We're about 16.3 amps. That's not too bad. Now, since we have a battery light on, this is going to be hard to do because it's getting dark. This vehicle leaves tonight, so I wanted to do this before it was gone.
All right, as you can see, there is a three wire terminal here. Three wires. And the way they're split up is the first wire closest to the main battery terminal should read. Let's turn the scope on. This wire should read battery voltage. As, as you can see, <clears throat> it does. So that means you have a good connection between this wire and the fuse box where it connects. The next wire is a signal send from the PCM to the Altair to control its voltage. This is another five, uh, five volt square wave signal. And the computer changes the dwell on the signal to control how much the regulator should be uh, attempting to charge the system. So what we should see here, let's back out of this and get into the lab scope mode. What we should see here is, like I said, a five volt signal to slow down our time base. All right. And as you can see, we have a waveform. I have a pretty good one too. There it is. Nice and clean. Computer is trying to do something with the alternator. Now the way it knows if it's doing it right or not is it actually uses this last wire, the one closest to the front of the vehicle, as the field reference wire. This wire sends a signal back to the PCM that the PCM uses to determine uh, how much it's affecting the field coils. Let's connect to that. And nothing on the uh, nothing on the uh, meter. So let's go up to this straight voltmeter, make sure. And yeah, as you can see, there's no voltage on the field return line or the field reference line telling me that the regulator inside this alternator, even though it was rebuilt, is no good. If this uh, regulator, it's either no good or the wrong one. That sometimes does happen. There are a couple different regulators for these Ford 6th generation alternators. And if you get the wrong one, you will have all kinds of issues. So what's happening is the computer is sending a signal to control the alternator. The alternator is responding and charging the system. And it, actually at times it's overcharging the system. I've seen it go as high as 16 volts earlier today. But the regulator is not reporting back to the alternator what's going on and since it's not going to report back to the computer and tell the computer what's going on the computer is assuming that the charging system has failed in some way and has turned on the light and of course with system voltage being erratic because the computer does not have complete control over it that could cause other code issues so I've this customer is coming to get this vehicle they're returning it back to where they had the alternator rebuilt they're going to have them take it back apart and recheck everything and have them fix the problem then they'll clear the codes drive the drive cycle and see what returns if, if no codes return then that's the only problem if i start troubleshooting all of those codes it's most likely that they're not actually faults they were generated faults by voltage problems inside the system Alrighty, um, that's pretty much it. Another thing to notice is, of course, your main terminal should always have your battery voltage on it, of course. Um, but that's it. Six generation alternators are pretty simple. Uh, one wire going straight to the battery. One wire in the connector, the closest to the rear of the vehicle, goes to the fuse box. Um, if you have alternators not charging at all, check that fuse. The second wire comes from the computer to control the regulator. The third wire comes from the regulator back to the computer to let the computer know what's going on. And I uh, hope that was helpful.